Okay, continuing on. Uh, the focus. Deliverance from inward condemnation. Romans 8, 1 through 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Romans 8, 3 and 4. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Amen. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. Romans 8 is talking about how to live with the inward sense that all of this is true. Believe it or not, there is a way to walk in the Spirit and to be set free in Christ so that you are no longer living in shame and condemnation, fear of God, and shrinking back. Amen. Romans 8 speaks of a life in the Spirit, which is a life progressively set free from the introspecting, measuring your performance, considering yesterday, and wondering if you're doing enough and whether God loves you. It is a life that increasingly is at home with God's testimony that you are his child and his heir and that nothing can separate you from his love. Amen. All of us were saved and then all seemingly fell into different levels of legalism, condemnation, and shame. Amen. I don't know anyone who is genuinely, sa genuinely saved who has not gone through this. Amen. The only people I know that haven't gone through that turned out, haven't, haven't gone through that, turned out to be unclear on the gospel as well. Amen. The enemy attacks God's people. Amen. We are at war. The enemy is going to attack you through your conscience to try to get you to hide from God and stay away from him so that you don't have any strength or any power that or any power and so that you eventually become a source of ridicule for the gospel. Amen. But even if that is the case, Jesus is not ashamed to call you his brother. Hebrews 2:11. Amen. Those who are being sanctified and he who sanctifies are all of one. And therefore, he is not ashamed to call us brethren, saying in the midst of the congregation, I will declare your name and sing your praise and put my trust in you. He even says, behold, I and the children you've given me. Hebrews 2.13. Amen. He presents us to God as trophies of grace because he knows the end of the story. He is going to bring you into glory. He is going to crown you with glory. And he has secured your inheritance, Romans 4, 16. You are an heir and are held in honor. Amen. You may feel like a reproach to Christ, not even worthy to be called a Christian because your life is so bad. You may be embarrassed because you think that anyone looking at you can see you don't seem to have the kind of righteousness the gospel ascribes to you. However, if even if you are plagued with these feelings of unworthiness, there is a testimony. Amen. Whether you know it or not, what you are putting on display is a person living under the mercy of God, a vessel of mercy prepared for glory. Romans 9, 23. Amen. God is not only showing forth his righteousness in justifying you. He's also showing forth his mercy and showing forth that he is the father of mercies and the God of all comfort. 2 Corinthians 1, 3. Amen. He confronts you in the midst of weakness and affliction. As we'll see in Romans 8, you are weak. Amen. You are not expected to be strong. Amen. His strength is perfected in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Amen. The sooner you get free from the idea that you have to be strong, the sooner you'll learn to rest in grace. 
Amen. Thank you, Lord. As you learn to rest in grace, there is a new law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that will set you free from the condemnation, fear, embarrassment, and shame. Amen. Jesus doesn't feel towards you the things your legalistic flesh feels towards you. Amen. That was beautifully written. All glory to God.